given what this horrendous incident, like you said, something you never would have imagined, are you afraid for your son? I am always afraid for my sons. And I really grapple with this as a mother because in my family, the worst has happened. Um, my 18 year old nephew was murdered in a case of mistaken identity. Now that was a different set of circumstances. And the young men that were convicted of killing him were African-American young men. Um, but it very personally for my family has highlighted that the worst can happen. And as African-American young men, there's often a target literally on their heads. Sometimes it's from other African-American young men who are struggling with their own issues. And sometimes it's, it's in other forms and faces, but it, it always concerns me. It's always top of mind. Everyone is shaken by this. And even in, in my own household, looking at the range of emotions that I'm seeing from my kids, my kids range in age from 18 to nine, and it's a cross section between um, anger and fear. And it has all of us rethinking the talk that we often have to have with our African-American boys. And I've, I've said this, I've talked to my son, especially my oldest son, about many scenarios, but never once have I contemplated a scenario where he's jogging down the street in the middle of the day and how he should respond. Um, but I think it again highlights the vulnerability, especially of African-American boys and men in this country. And there's still so much work to be done. I know the transition of the Obama administration, there was a very big push on my brother's keeper and where we are um, in shoring up our African-American boys and men. And I hope that with this November's election, there's an opportunity to continue that type of work. That's the type of leadership that we need coming from the White House. And that's the type of leadership that we're missing right now. I'm not blaming President Trump for his murder, but I do think there is a tone that can be set from the top in the same way that you can bring people together. You can equally divide them and you can incite people uh, uh, to, do, to do things that they shouldn't do. And I think it's the reason that the president needs to be mindful of his language, that quite often his language is divisive. And it makes it seem as if we are divided in, into groups that should be pitted against one another. And that's not what a president should do.